number six, dual page view. I use this all the time, and I don't think all that many people know about it. Dual page view splits it into two things. So if you're writing important notes on one side, and you want to keep it there, and keep going on notes while other kids try and catch up, you can do dual page view. So now we have, this is slide number five, well I guess, tip number five with tip number six listed right here. Okay, so then we slide to the next one, and six moves here, five moves off screen. Okay, and tip number seven is going to be about pin page. So let's say the pin page, there is something important written here that you might want to reference later on. Once you're on this page, you can select pin page. Whoops. Let's move it. Uh, let's move it over here, and we could pin this page, and so now no matter if I go backwards, no matter if I go forwards, however far I'm going forward, you can see that this slide stays in the same place. So if you have something important that you're going to use, it can stay here throughout the duration of the lesson or however long that you think might be important. So I'm going to undo that and now I'm back to the normal. If you, when you have dual page, it now it has one page, so this is going to switch me back to having one page. Now I'm back into one page mode. Uh, what was this one? Using pre-existing images. Uh, some people know about uh, this, some people don't, but let's say you want to use a pre-existing image for your class, you're studying theirs, Okay, so you would go to, this is the normal view, then you go to the gallery, you type in bears, and here are pictures of bears, and all you have to do, maybe you're studying uh, three little bears, so here's baby bear, papa bear, mama bear, and they're pretty, I mean, that's like kind of the right height I guess you're even going for there. Uh, there might also be, here's the polar bear. There's Goldilocks. Okay, and it's really a case for that. Uh, anyway, there's a whole bunch of stuff in pre-existing images. I think especially for lower school teachers, if you're introducing something, this is a great place to look. And they're constantly updating this. So if you update it, you'll get more and more images as you go. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do here? I want to go to the next one, which is all about locking. So actually, I'm going to go back to gallery, and I'm going to do a little math lesson that I do all the time uh, with pictures. Here, XY grid. I found it. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, I'm going to extend it so it's a big part of the page. Great. Now we can do graphing, right? We can plot points. We can do all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, Jimmy comes up. He plots 3, comma 1. Sammy comes up. She plots negative 2, comma 3. And that's wonderful. And then I come up and I touch the board and now it's all screwed up, right? Well, what I can do, if I get it back to the proper things, is I can lock this, this image in place. So now I don't do anything to disrupt that line that I liked right there. Um, I can move this to get it perfectly here. And in fact, I want this one now not to be red, but I want it to be green. So I'm going to go to Properties and make it green because I'm going to create a line that goes between those two. So let me show you how to make a straight line. I'm going to go to this line function. Here's a line. One point, two points. It's going to go all, extend all the way through. Oops. Let's undo that. Uh, let's go to here. If I click on it now, I can extend it on and on forever because we know that when we graph lines, we want it to go in both directions. And the problem with this line may or may not recognize is that it only has an arrow on one end, so now I can go back here and change the beginning of the arrow so there are arrows on both ends. And we plotted green points, so let's make the line itself green. Okay? So I plotted points, I locked it, I made some lines, and that's fantastic. That's not our whole lesson because uh, Lucy's going to give us a point on the coordinate grid. Maybe? Yeah. I, think, I think I heard you say that it was 9, 
comma she six. Said, yeah. Absolutely. All right. And then someone, maybe Alana's going to give us a point in the third quadrant over here. Two negative numbers. Okay, negative <laughs> four and negative two. Negative four, negative two. Are we still recording? I think we are. All right, so now this is going to be a red line. I'm going to go from my one point through my other point. Now I'm going to click off of it with the arrow. I'm going to extend it. Oops, no. I'm going to extend it like this. I'm going to change the start to an arrow. And last thing I want to do is I want to turn it into red because there it is. And so now I've graphed two lines of two different colors. And probably what I'm interested in is the intersection, which is something right around here, which might be, it's not exactly, but let's say it's uh, two, nope, three, comma two, would be the intersection or the solution to those two lines. Now let's say you wanted to go two weeks forward, and I think this is actually the demo lesson that I did when I came here, um, and you're graphing inequalities. So here's, uh, this line is not the graph of it looks like it would be negative one-third x plus three, about. But we're going to make it an inequality, which means we're going to need a, da a dotted line. I just created a dotted line here. And it's greater than, so I'm going to shade everything that's above this. Okay? And then our other line over here, which looks like it would be something like... Uh, 3 over 2x plus 1 half, it's going to be less than, so I'm going to shade everything below it. Right? And then my solution set is going to be the place where everything is red and green. And don't worry if you don't know how this is working out, but it's this sort of triangle right here. And so to sort of make it fun for the kids, what I could do is I could take this magic pen and make smiley faces exist in this whole triangle because that is the graphical solution set to this problem. It's where all the happy faces are. Okay? Great. Number 10. 